Hi, I'm Michael Hewitt. I'm phoning in from upstate New York, and I've been in love with yoga and guiding since 1997. And uh, this is our second teacher, well, practitioner training, Jedi training that we've done. And um, I'm extremely honored and excited to be teaching alongside you and Joseph. Cool. Joseph, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Joseph Schwartz, and um, I think by vocation, I would be um, a somatic therapist, and I bring um, uh, a different lens to this yoga training where we're looking at um, how do we have an experience in our body and being, being in tune with, with how our mind is interacting with that experience. And I'm Karuna. Um, Mind Oasis was born almost five years ago as of April 25th in the desert of Arizona. And um, <laughs> I can't talk about it without crying because it brings together people like you and me. Um, now I know Russell, now I know Retta, and now I am able to see my beautiful friend and teacher Michael on a regular basis. And without Mind Oasis, I'm not entirely sure that that would exist. So it to me is a, a really important space. It's a safe space. And it's a space for um, what I'm calling yoga knots, the explorers of yoga. And by that, I don't necessarily mean the physical aspect, though that's awesome. And I'm really looking forward this year to enjoying both Michael and Joseph's teachings, which we'll talk about here um, next. Um, but also the subtle body, which is unbelievably important aspect of our world and life, especially these days with things being um, difficult in new ways that we haven't seen in our lifetime. And then kind of the flavor that I bring is something called snail yoga, which is strangely popular, um, where we just move kind of as slow as a snail. And we listen to really good music and I give mediocre um, instructions. So <laughs> that's one thing that I bring. And then the other thing that I bring is um, Tibetan Buddhist philosophy that um, I try to interweave with yoga philosophy. So showing the places where these two beautiful traditions intersect and can inform our lives in meaningful ways, like where you're not thinking about it, but where you're acting through it. So having said that, maybe Michael and Joseph, you can talk a little bit about um, the yoga asana, the Tuesday night um, lab, and what that kind of looks like for people. I know that we have people of all abilities and all bodies. Um, and I, I would love for you to talk a little bit about how you address that and sort of what your philosophy on movement is. Well, what we learned last year when we did it uh, was A, this is a virtual platform. And B, as you said, everyone has a different ability level, a different body level, different levels of injury, uh, different levels of um, health. And so we saw very quickly, Joseph and I saw very quickly that we had a beautiful program that kind of needed to be put on the back burner in place of delivering the principles that informed the program. So how do we arm someone to the teeth with the principles that allow them to be protected in their practice with their their range of motion their boundaries any limitations that need to be respected and then also how to explore the frontiers in a way that empowers them and if it's too protective it can feel restrictive or boring or overly cautious and if it's too empowering, too gung-ho, you can get injured. So it's that um, warp and woof of the breath, the mindfulness, understanding the anatomy, being shown the logic of how we put it all together so that anyone could create their own practice in a way that works for them to help them lower their stress levels, to help them recover energy that had been lost through the stress, 
um, how to stack their bones and their posture so that their breath can move in a way that's not inhibited, so that the mind is sharper and there's a, there's a joy that permeates their day. Yeah, actually, before Joseph goes, I was just wondering if anyone else feels like taking a collective breath. Um, when you said that stress, I was like, oh, we all just need to take a breath here. So if you'd like to join me on just a nice inhale, a little pause at the top and an exhale. Sort of a touchstone of being together, separate and present. Hey, shorts, take it away. Mm. One of the things that that um, I've experienced in going to various yoga classes is that um, teachers tend to compact a whole bunch into a short period of time so that people can get a workout. Whereas yoga is not really about getting the workout. It's about having an experience so that we can grow. Um, and this is actually why I believe that your Snell Yoga Karuna is so popular because you take four fundamental poses instead of trying to, in an hour, instead of trying to pack 27 poses. And people actually get a chance to register the experience they're having rather than it being Oh, here I'm having an experience in this posture. Oh, what's the next one? And then all of a sudden, their nervous system becomes overwhelmed. That's actually one of the big pieces of, of the work that I'll be sharing is the very first two classes will just be discussing how the nervous system is responding to our environment and how our breath integrates how our nervous system is responding and how we can use our breath to modulate our nervous system response. And then from there, that gives us a safe platform so that we can start to explore movement. Hmm. I'm happy you said the word explore because I feel like I went through um, two teacher trainings. Um, a 200 hour and I think two 100 hours. Um, but it was really focused on what one would teach others as opposed to how to explore your own experience of your own life in relationship to not just what's on the plastic rectangle that you may or may not tippy toe a toe off of. Um, and so, Michael, before we move on to sort of the the subtle body and yoga sutras, which you teach during the Wednesday evening philosophy. I just wonder if you can elaborate a little bit more on our Jedi or yoga knot concept, um, because I feel like it's what sets our yoga immersion apart. And I also think it's what makes it really um, transformational and meaningful for our participants. Yeah. Um... Well, I'm, I'm a sci-fi geek, and Jedi is a term from Star Wars. And uh, there's the, the Jedi are associated with the light side of the Force, which tends to be about how are we better for others versus the Sith, right? They are the, the magical, empowered ones inside of the Empire who are like, okay, well, we love power. We're about self-empowerment and screw everybody else, right? So we can see this in the world. Like not all leaders are big, selfish, you know, destructive people. That That's not true. But to me, like what happens if we could have more enlightened, more realized, more compassionate wise people in leadership positions versus this whole idea of tearing down systems, which, you know, I like my hot shower. <laughs> I like my, my iPhone. I don't think I could make an iPhone. Like, you know, it's nice to have systems that provide us this technologies, right? If we just rip it all down. What are we going to go back to like stick stones and five, you know, branches that got struck by lightning, right? We, use our systems how come we can't 
awaken the systems from inside? How come the Jedi principles of being better for others, which includes ourselves, right? When I address my stresses, when I address my dysregulation, you know, we put the mask on first before you help the person next to you. How come that couldn't be a spiritual principle? And it actually is. So the full spectrum of this training, which is the yoga people know, right? The physical yoga, the yoga on the mat, the yoga of the poses and the outfits and all that. That's awesome. We deliver. And the yoga of the electrical body, like what actually makes us alive. What, how does that act as a, you know, the nervous system frontier that binds our consciousness to the animal body in such a way that we have a mental benefit of doing a physical thing, right? How does that translate? How does something non-physical, meaning consciousness, benefit from a physical act? So we also speak deeply about that in terms of the meditation technology, how it works, the lineage of it, the practice of it in a quiet, private setting. And then how do you do it in life? How do you bring it, you know, as a, as a tantrica would, out into your profession, out into your worldly life uh, in such a way that there isn't this dichotomy anymore of what is spiritual activity and what isn't. And so this is where we would also speak about the Yoga Sutras. What are these great pithy ideas that have stood the test of time as being effective, right? It's, it's true because it's effective. And it's not a matter of belief. It's a matter of how we have confidence in it because we've tested it. So we go deeply into those most powerful ideas of the, of the sutras, which is almost a 2000 year old text. Um, so that again, in life, we can bring these incredible practices for peace and empowerment and, and paradigm change into the world. I'm really happy that you mentioned paradigm change. I know that our group last year experienced a lot of transformation and they did so both individually, but also as a group. And I know that many of them ended up taking the Mind Oasis meditation immersion together. They became um, accountability partners. And it wasn't like because of us, we didn't like put a like, you get to go with that person, right? They chose to continue and to create bonds in order to kind of squeeze the most juice out of the lemon. And that also to me was like really beautiful to witness. I'm your Thursday evening gal. And what we do on Thursday nights is um, we start out with a little snail yoga, um, good music, slow movement, just a few postures. So we warm our body up for the experience of me sharing the Dharma. And no one here is trying to make anyone a Buddhist. No one here is actually trying to make anyone a yoga, um, a yogi either. Um, that just might happen naturally one way or the other. And um, so I'll just be sharing with you sort of the basics of um, Tibetan Buddhism. Um, I have been studying for just under 10 years. Michael Hewitt was one of my very first teachers. Um, so we'll go through things like the Four Noble Truths, six perfections and other wonderful lists that are designed to really help you become a Jedi, to become someone who's able to help, um, starting by helping yourself and um, empowering yourself. So that's sort of my contribution. The training runs from April 1st through the end of June. I think June 28th is the last session. So we'll have three evening classes each week plus master classes like Retta's class on the chakras on the weekend and we'll have another we i think we have six master classes including ayurveda so um looking at what we put in our bodies um as well as yin yoga and some other offerings like that hopefully qigong um so there'll be sort of a, a rounded um curriculum outside of what michael joseph and i offer and then 
<clears throat> kind of a little perk that we offer on Mind Oasis with any of our immersions is that you also get access to any series that are happening during that time. And the reason that we do that is so that you have kind of a, I don't know, a very holistic approach for this three month container that we're offering that you can experience a whole bunch of different teachings are recorded of course you get way more juice out of the lemon if you come live however recognizing that's a hell of a commitment there will be times that you can't make it and so of course we offer the recordings and they're usually up within about 48 hours you will grow you will transform we all do we all do um and you will i think get a really well-rounded experience because while michael and joseph and i jive in a lot of ways we also are unique in our own ways as well so i feel like it's a really well-rounded experience because of the three of us plus guest teachers like the lovely retta and others plus the master teachings plus um all the teachings you get on mind oasis during the three months so we kick off on april 1st we wrap up around the end of june we start and end on the new moon which i personally find very exciting